Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is Cornholio. <clears throat> I want to make a little video this morning about the P365X Macro. Empty, 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 nothing in it. Okay. I thought I'd cleared up some of the information about this gun and the first day I bought it and the first couple of shots that I made. Two shots, two shots it fired and then it quit firing. And I covered this in that video. Uh, mind you, that video was shot with my phone. I bought the gun, had a lot of stuff to do that day. Wasn't expecting to uh, go to the range, but I thought, mm, I've got to, you know, you know how that goes. So I ran out of the range, pulled it straight out of the box, no lube, no nothing, started shooting, it fired two rounds, and that was it. Okay, so why did that happen? Uh, I covered it in that video, but today I want to take a real close look at that because I've had too many people uh, write me and say, oh, and I was going to trade this gun and that gun for this one, and kind of hinting that now I'm glad I didn't. I'm moving my microphone around here, y'all. Um, there, I just don't... I wanted to make sure that you people know that this gun is working flawlessly now, okay? Uh, and I highly recommend it, probably higher than any other pistol that I have ever recommended before in my life. Uh, it is a fantastic, fantastic gun. It shoots flawlessly. All right, since I uh, fixed what was wrong with it, and it was a simple fix, uh, it was something that you are going to see from time to time from any gun, from any manufacturer. Uh, the gun is completely serviceable now. Uh, it works perfectly. I have over a thousand rounds, well over a thousand rounds through it now. <clears throat> Probably, I think, maybe 1,200. I put 200 rounds through it yesterday. Uh, it is extremely accurate, okay? The compensator helps with that. It helps uh, on follow-up shots. Uh, but a 3.1 inch barrel, I could still hit 50 yard, six and eight inch round steel plates at 50 yards pretty accurately too and pretty repeatable so 25 yards and in 15 yards yeah there's there's no issue with this gun none whatsoever uh so let's uh dive into this and let's look and see what really happened how i fixed it have i had it repeat that issue no uh let's just look at it okay set the slide apart all right, coming over here too, and it's filthy because I didn't clean it last night. Um, let's go and look at exactly what happened, okay? Now, I know the tube doesn't like us showing us taking things apart, but I'm not taking it apart to do any modifications, okay? I'm taking this apart so that you guys can see if anything happens to your gun, how you fix it. Because it was an extremely easy fix. It took no <laughs> a few minutes. I had to go and find a little pair of pliers. Uh, even though they say use a when you fix this, use a, a screwdriver of some sort. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's get down to the brass tacks of it. This spring. Make sure that we are in focus here. It should be right in the middle. All right, you can see this spring moving. This spring right here. This is your trigger bar return spring. It's right here. It goes, it's a little V. It loops around once and then it comes in and tags right here. You can see it right here on this end. It's just a V spring with a loop in it. All right, that's all it is. And when you press the trigger, it's what returns your trigger. Okay, that's it. During mass production of these guns, <clears throat> they're always gonna be an issue here or there, or whatever. I don't know how the machines put this thing in there or if a person puts it in there, I would assume it's a machine, but you can see this leg of it comes and hooks over right here. There's no problem with that, it just hooks. It loops around, it comes up, and on the trigger bar, there's a hole right here. 
you can see where the spring comes up through this hole. That's what was wrong with it, okay? Obviously, during manufacturing, this spring didn't get seated into that hole. It probably looped over this side. And when I fired two shots, the spring just, it just walked over and it was just flopping, just loose right there. So the easy fix was that I went and got a tiny little pair of pliers. Uh, had a screwdriver as well, but it worked easier with the pliers. And I just grabbed it right here, pulled it down, and stuck it up and popped it in that hole. Now he's in there now and you can actually feel a little bit of a resistance right there where it's in the hole as it's supposed to be on the trigger bar, trigger return bar. And it works perfectly. You see what it does, okay? That's the only problem. That's what it was. It was something that simple that all I had to do was put that trigger bar or trigger return spring back in its little hole and make sure that it popped in there correctly. And it did. And since then, I have had flawless operation out of this pistol. I mean flawless operation out of this pistol. Absolutely no issues whatsoever, okay? There's no primer strike dragging, uh, none of that stuff. I checked a whole bunch, at least 100 rounds that I shot yesterday. I picked them up and inspected all of the uh, primers. And it makes a little oblong hole kind of like that okay it's not a round hole it's a little oblongish hole and that is because of the shape of the front of the firing pin okay no drags no nothing whatsoever this thing shoots fantastic so in case you weren't clear and in case you saw my first video and maybe didn't watch it at the end, maybe you just read the intro, I don't know. Maybe you saw the first of it. I don't know if you saw. Uh, could that happen to any manufacturer? Absolutely, it could happen to any manufacturer. Could it happen to any given pistol that's just come out of manufacturing? It could. Any company, any pistol, things like this can happen, okay? It's called mass production. Uh, and they have quality assurance, and I'm sure when if anybody grabbed it, cocked it, and pulled the trigger, like I did quite a few times before I fired it, it worked. I pulled it back, I popped it, I checked the reset, it worked maybe 10 times before shooting it. I'm thinking that shooting it was probably what caused, what caused it to malfunction, the jarring from it. Now, it might have even sat on the bottom side. It might have been sitting right in here. Okay, because there's some little shiny mark right there. So it could have been sitting down here. It could have been sitting up there. It just took a few times for it to get shot before it to really jar it and that come off its ledge here. But since then, I've had no problems, okay? Again, this trigger return spring on the trigger return bar, there's a little hole right here that this little loop, and I mean little V, uh, or What's the word I'm looking for? The little tab that tabs upward has to be in that hole. And this trigger return spring, you can flip it left to right. It doesn't matter. It's, it's ambi, okay? It goes, you could take this side, put it in here, and that side, put it in there, or flip it around, or however you want to do it. It's just simple. It's identical on both sides. So it doesn't matter which way you put it in there, as long as you get this one over the tab here, right here, and get this one in the hole, there's no issue, all right? So... It is as reliable as any other gun that I put a thousand rounds through. And yes, it is my everyday carry. I carry this thing with me everywhere. When I walk out of this house, it's on my body. All right. That's how much I trust this thing. Now, to any one of you who thinks, oh, well, I'm not going to trade my other gun in over there. Do you recommend it still? Absolutely, I recommend this. Highly recommend it over any other pistol that I believe I have ever owned. I recommend this. Uh, I've watched other videos. People say they don't like it because they can't put a compensator on this barrel. Because of the compensator that's on it, the barrel only comes to right here. It's a 3.1 inch barrel. And you can't extend another barrel outside of the slide because of the way the compensation is cut. 
and they won't buy this. They don't like this gun because they can't put an extended barrel and a compensator on it. Um, compensator. Okay. It has a compensator on it and it works very well. Would a barrel mounted compensator work better? Very, very possibly so. Yeah. I've had a couple of them. I didn't like them because of the compression <coughs> issues. Excuse me. It's 30 degrees outside. I was outside all day yesterday <clears throat> and the pollen is still out there from the ragweed and other things. So I got a little <clears throat> pollination going on that's causing me to cough. Um, it's not the COVID. Anyway, I don't understand why people prefer barrel mounted compensators on a nine millimeter over a slide compensator. There's a couple of benefits with the slide compensator that you don't have. I mean, th that's just not gonna be there versus a barrel mounted compensator, which changes pressures. Now I've had certain brands, I'm not getting any brands, but I've had certain kind of white box, green box, umk, uh, uh, rounds that would not fire through my Glock 19 or my Glock 43X because it had barrel mounted compensators and there just wasn't enough oomph in the, in the, in the cartridges to cycle the gun reliably. So well, then you got to change spring weight if you're going to do that. Why? Why do I have to change spring weights? Why do I have to change anything on my gun? This thing has run seven or eight different brands of uh, target rounds, the lightest stuff there is out there. It shot uh, some plus P115 and plus P124s perfectly, okay? It's extremely accurate, even though I did put on the taller SIG sights uh, <clears throat> and the Holosun 507K. Uh, I have them matched up and lined up pretty awesomely now that I can hit with the uh, red dot or I can hit it with the iron sights at 50 yards got that on video too so the last video as a matter of fact um, the first shot I shot and I pulled it down I had actually didn't have the uh, uh, new sights uh, sighted in perfectly and I put the whole song back on because I take the whole song off to uh, slide these sights in and use my old machine to put them in there and I just kind of eyeballed it and lined it up. And up and uh, left and right, it was fine, but up and down, it was off, even though it looked like it wasn't off. So my first shot, when I shot on the video, the last video, I missed hitting the dirt. <clears throat> and I said, okay, so I used the iron sights and the very next shot, I hit that 50 yard target. That's a little eight inch plate. And that's on the video. That was with these iron sights, okay, the second shot. And then yesterday I went out there, I was gonna video it was already getting chilly and it was getting dark and getting late and I don't want to take the time to set up all the cameras. And basically I was only out there to recite in the hollow sun. <clears throat> and oh, it works, it worked great. Now it worked good up to the 20 and 25 yards and stuff like that. But when I went out the 50 yard, it was off a little. So got that sighted in yesterday and from 25 and 50 yards, I was tearing those steel plates up. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, this is by far my all-time favorite carry gun. All-time favorite. I mean, not even a question about that. This is my all-time favorite. So, to any of you out there who are still on the fence about purchasing this little pistol, let me tell you this. It's worth it. I recommend it over... Oh, that come out. I recommend this over uh, a lot of other guns. Pretty much any other carry gun you can come up with, I recommend this on, over it. Get in there. He's a little finicky this morning. Did that come off? It is a little pain sometimes putting this thing back in. Okay, and that works. Uh, it's, it can be a little pain. Um, everything has to line up just right to go in. There's some pretty good tolerances that you got to deal with. Uh, and that didn't go in. Uh, 
Honest to God, I've never had that much trouble putting the damn thing back together. I did put in a different trigger. I put in the M-Carbo trigger that you guys can see right here. I'm not going to go into that. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do that. Um, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get into that. Uh, it's just, uh, I get it. I get it. You don't want to have to deal. And when you put it in the M-Carbo, sometimes that little tab, uh, there, back together. I, oh, I lost my train of thought there for a second. To any of you who are still on the fence about buying this gun, I, I think your fears are always valid. Uh, do my videos, hopefully through some of my videos, maybe I can ease your pain in thinking about buying this pistol. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I had an issue with my Glock 43X and a Glock 48. Talked about that in other videos. Um, got to where I didn't feel like I could trust it. Especially if I was in a hot situation and had to fire multiple rounds. I had issues with the uh, slide release, slide stop, lock, slide release. I had issues with that coming out of whack and the side of the polymer uh i could push it in with my thumb but now that was running 100 rounds and in, in near down there 100 degree weather but it happened multiple times it happened with the uh the s15 mags it also happened with the 10 round glock mags so it wasn't a magazine issue it was something going on and i couldn't understand how in the world that happened because that pin goes all the way through but something happened and, and it was a factory uh, slide release. I just, I don't know. I didn't take the time to tear it apart and look at everything. I was actually filming another gun that day. So I took it out at the end of the day and, and had, I think eight magazines. Most of them were 15 rounders. Some of them I put on five rounders, so 20 rounders. And I mean, I was running that gun as fast as I could pull the trigger. It did work. It locked the slide back on the last round. Uh, and when I put a new magazine in there and recharged it, everything went back into place. But that scared me, made me nervous, made me wonder, do I need new parts? Do I need to put a different trigger in? Do I need to put a different slide release in? Do I need to do a, this and that? And I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I've modified guns to the yin yang till I'm tired of it. So I got rid of the Glocks. <clears throat> I went back and got another XL. Uh, I still didn't like the XL because I couldn't get my hand completely around it without my pinky being kind of halfway on and halfway off. And the one thing that I loathe and despise about any gun, I don't care who it is, I don't care how great it is, I don't care if it's made out of gold, I do not like a gun that relies on a magazine extension for my pinky. I, I can't deal with that. I, I just, I've tried it in every single gun I've bought, including the G26, Kimber Solo. Uh, I learned a long time ago, don't buy Kimbers unless you buy the 1911s. There are other guns that just, I've heard too many trolls. Some people love them, but it's okay. You do you, I do me, all right? Uh, but I don't buy any of the guns. The, uh, <clears throat> the 365 original, I got rid of it. The XL, the first one, I got rid of it uh, because I bought it with the Glock 43X. And the Glock 43X felt so much better in my hand that I never shot the XL, so I got rid of it. Then when I had the problems with the Glock, I went and bought another XL, and anyway, you know, I mean, it works. It's just eh, someone there. So I sold it and went back to the G45, the Glock fifth generation. Uh, it's like the 19X, you know, where they got the 19 slide on the 17 frame uh, because it just felt so good in my hands. Big, yeah, but I can hit with it at 50 yards. Still eight inch steel plates with iron sights, just like I can with this one. But it's a little big for inside the waistband carry. Um, <clears throat> although I can hide it pretty good because I'm built that way. Uh, 
fantastic gun. That Glock G45 is probably, in my opinion, is the best Glock they have ever made, hands down. Nothing even comes close. 19s, I know they're the most popular pistol on the planet. It ain't even in the same category to me in the way it feels when I hold it as the G45. That thing is fantastic. And it's my number two. Kind of tied with a couple of 1911s, all right? A couple of four inch 1911s. Um, it's tied in my second overall best pistol I've ever owned in my life, okay? Uh, this SIG X Macro edges them out because of size, because it's already <coughs> cut for your optic. It has a full pick rail on it if you want to put a light laser on it. Uh, they have the proper tall sights to put on it to co-witness through this thing. And I know that's an issue. Some people like a third witness and where they want to put in an excess sight, which excess is a great sight. I've had it before. And the back sights are cut a little lower so you don't lose as much sight through the window. And my reply to that is I like absolute co-witness. I just do. I love absolute co-witness because there's no doubt in my mind if my sight goes out, I still have my iron sights. Uh, and they say, well, you lose half of your sight window. I see where they're coming from, but it's not like you're looking down a scope, okay? When you look down a scope, you're way up here. All right, if you, <coughs> if you got your, <coughs> there we go again. <clears throat> if you got your sights right here, yes, you've lost half of it, okay? But looking through a red dot, you're way out here. You can shoot this thing with both eyes open. You can still see everything else around this site. And again, there's nobody back there, this thing. But I still can look through this thing and I can see my red dot. I can see my iron sights. And with my eyes open, I can see everything around it. So saying that you've lost half your sight window, I see where they're coming from. But no, you're not. You see your target. You see where you're aiming. It's just a non-issue to me. Uh, for those who want a barrel-mounted compensator, yes, you have to take this slide off and put an XL slide on here with an XL barrel, okay? This is a 3.1, just like the original P365. The XL come with a 3.7, 3.7 inch barrel, but it comes out to the edge. So if you want to put a longer barrel on to put your own compensator or can on it, then you are going to need to take this slide off and put on an XL slide. And you can buy them from SIG as well. They have some of the SIG slides that when you take off the mounting plate to put on your red dot, you lose your back sights, okay? They also have XL slides that when you take, they're just like this one. When you take off the mounting plate, you get to keep your back sights, okay? So they have both. You can buy them. The one that keeps your back sights is a little more expensive. I think $50, $70 more than the other barrel, but they have them on the site. You can get them. Plus, if you already have an XL, you can just take the slide off and put it on this. What makes this thing king, I mean absolute king of all other hand carry guns is its size and a 17 round magazine. So 17 plus one in this little gun. And it fits my hand perfectly. It doesn't look like the P320 is like a water-headed baby up here, you know, where you're holding it in the side and the, the slides up here, it's like massive. Okay, I probably shouldn't say water-handed gun, but that's what it looks like. Your bore line side is really high, and I know the new AXG Scorpion and some of the legions and stuff, they've kind of undercut it up to get your hand up a little higher in some of those other SIGs. Uh, but this one is fantastic. Here's my hand. My line of sight, bore line of the center of the pistol is about right here. Okay, so you're talking about not even an inch above your hand. The uh, compensator cuts out on this thing. Oh, they work. They work so well. Folks, they work so well. There's no reason in my view, unless you just like changing springs and having to buy certain rounds that'll run through them, there's no reason to put on a barrel, longer barrel and a barrel compensator on it. Uh, is if I'm hitting 50 yards, eight inch plates and six inch plates at 50 yards, I actually even once hit the four inch plate, just once. Uh, but if I can do that with this 3.1 inch barrel, I don't think I need anything longer. Anything over 50 yards, 
I'm not shooting. I'm running, okay? If they're shooting at me at 50 yards, yeah, I may turn around and take a few shots at them, but anything longer than 50 yards, I'm running. Your feet are your best weapon in a fight. Get the hell out of there, okay? Lots of people a lot smarter than me will tell you the same thing, okay? Uh, but there are times in life where someone has to make one, like the guy who shot the arm shooter at 40 yards and started a whole new trend of people training to shoot at 40 yards. Now, mind you, the 40, the, the 50 yard plates I was shooting at were four inch, six inch, and eight inch. Not even wider than my fat head, okay? That's a head shot at 50 yards. This gun is capable of doing it as it is, right? Uh, what else can I say? Uh, it is fantastic. I highly, 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 highly recommend this gun. No matter what you saw in my other videos, if you watch it all the way through, you'll see that it was an easy fix. And since then, it's run flawlessly. I mean, 100% flawlessly. Uh, so would I recommend it? Probably more than any other gun on the planet if you are looking for a concealed carry weapon this thing, and even guys, bean pole rail guys, can appendix carry them in the middle, and, and with a loose t-shirt, you can't see it. I, I'm not a little skinny little thing, but I have been walking through, around town all over the place with this gun on my appendix, and with me, I kinda, eh, kinda pull my back a little bit where it's not at 12 o'clock, it's at like one o'clock. Uh, it just fits better in me. Uh, and I've carried this thing, and nobody has ever been able to tell the printing on it. Uh, I talked to a buddy of mine one time at a particular store, and he's sitting there, and he's got, he showed me he carries a little pocket two-shot Derringer. And I said, that's just two shots. He goes, yeah, but it'll get you in a pinch. I said, or you could do this. And I pulled my shirt up, and he looked at it, and he goes, what the hell is that? I said, that's 18 rounds in this little gun. He goes, what? 18, what? He, he, he hadn't even heard of the new X macro. So, <laughs> I thought, I'm not taking out of my pants here where we're at right now. I just want you to know. He goes, man, I can't even tell you wearing anything. He said, that is awesome. I told him the holster I got, told him about the gun, and he said, get my next paycheck. I'm going to get me one. Uh, so, you're talking about 18 rounds versus two. Yeah, this wins, okay? This wins over 10 plus one. This wins over six plus one, seven, eight, nine plus one. It, run, it, it wins over 12 plus one, 15 plus one, okay? Uh, I, I'm just telling you, I have never been more impressed with a new pistol than I have this one. Does it have a long trigger pull with the factory trigger? Absolutely. With this one, I put the, uh, the M Carbo trigger in it and at about 90 degrees, and just a little bit of take up, it, it breaks. So we're going from, I don't know, 90, 80, we're going from 100 to 80, I'm guessing, okay? I didn't put a scale on it or nothing. But the break on it, back at 90 degrees, and there's not, at the very bottom, there's like a quarter inch travel from the very bottom of the trigger to the trigger guard, okay? It ain't a 1911, but it, putting the M Carbo trigger on there greatly reduces the amount of travel that you have to get to the firing position and reset trigger. Uh, it, you can easily make more accurate shots with less travel. This is about a four and a half pound pull. I, tr I talked about in other videos. Uh, I did buy an Armory Craft uh, Master Trigger Kit. I did not change the striker spring. I did change the striker lock plunger spring, which I'm probably gonna put the original back in here. Uh, I changed out the sear spring, which I'm okay with, and I changed out the trigger return spring, which I'm okay with because it only took it from a six pound to a four and a half pound trigger pull. Uh, if I put the striker spring back in there, it may add a little extra weight to it. I don't know, I don't care. Uh, the engagement is perfect on it. Um, I may put that in back in there. I don't like changing, like I said before, spring weights uh, to get a lighter trigger pull. 
but I've shot, I had over 800 rounds in this thing and I already polished up the parts in it and I was still getting a very consistent six pound trigger pull with the original flat trigger in it. Changed out the M Carbo. I didn't check it before changing the springs out because I changed them all when I had it apart. So with the M Carbo and the, and the three little springs that I changed, it went from a six pound to a four and a half pound. I'm okay with that. I am gonna change that other spring back out when I clean it here and put the, the striker lock plunger spring, what that thing is called. I'm gonna put that original one back in. Cause I don't want to take away anything that, that lightning and trigger pull is one thing. Reducing the weight of the safety mechanisms, I'm not too, too happy with that. The sear, I'm okay because it's minuscule, uh, the difference. And I really even couldn't tell the difference pushing down on the striker versus the new striker, lighter weight striker spring. I, I mean the striker, the, the sear, I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, the trigger return spring, the trigger, it does feel like it's a little softened. However, that's not part of the safety. Um, but the plunger spring for that little sear lock, uh, I mean striker lock, I, I kind of want to put that one back to normal. Uh, I'm okay with the sear and the uh, trigger return spring being the weights that they are. Because uh, I've dropped it a time or two and it, it didn't, on purpose. Uh, and it didn't fire. Uh, I mean, I didn't have any bullets in it when I dropped it, of course. It was testing it, um, but it didn't fire. So I'm okay with that. Anyway, I guess this video rambled on long enough. I wanted you guys to understand what was the actual malfunction. Uh, I hope it picked it up on these cameras. What I did to fix it and how it's run since then. Am I still in the center, pretty much? I think I must have moved my camera. I'm gonna have to edit this and make sure that all the goody parts are in view. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about this little pistol. Uh, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to highly recommend it. Uh, if you have other guns and you love them, then don't change. Okay. Just whatever you like. I always tell people you find a gun that you can shoot, that you can handle and you can hit your target 90% of the time. Why not 100? Who hits 100% of their shots every time? That's what we have magazines for, extra magazines. Uh, but you find a gun that you like, how it feels in your hand, <clears throat> you can hit with it, go get some training, practice, 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 and also set your sights to your carry ammo. Don't set your sights to target ammo. You can get them close to target ammo, but when you go to set your sights, set them to the what you're gonna be carrying. Uh, there are different types of ammo out there that can be off as much as two to three inches, even in at 25 yards, versus uh, what you get from the carry ammo, okay? It's expensive to shoot. Yeah, but you need to shoot it. You need to do it, okay? Folks, as always, I got to say, shoot that thing. God bless America. God bless you. Cornelio out.